everybody. Welcome to the couch, episode 35 of the Hey Everybody podcast, where I am doomed to an eternity of saying hey everybody at the beginning, even if I'm feeling more of a howdy or an ahoy. Uh, ahoy. Um, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys had a good week. Uh, my nose feels tingly, so we're just going to have to deal with that. We're going to have to deal with a lot today. And uh, God willing, my nose being tingly will be the worst of it. Um, I had a whole idea of what I wanted to talk about on the podcast this week. And then uh, I was taking my morning constitutional and changed my mind. And I junked the whole thing and uh, spent the morning thinking about it and came up with what we're going to talk about instead. Morning constitutional is a fun one. Um, for those of you that don't know, which is none of you, you all know, a constitutional is just a walk. It's a ramble. You just take a walk. And the morning constitutional is uh, you take a walk in the morning. Simple concepts here at the Hey Everybody podcast. Uh, and I've been talking for a long time with my wife about how I would love to just wake up and take a walk and drink my coffee and wake up that way rather than jumping right into my phone or just right into my life, I would rather get out in the world and kind of let my body and my mind wake up and move. And um, and I talked about it for so long and then it was just, you should just, you know, the way we talk about things for too long, <laughs> doable things. You know, I, I wonder, um, certainly there are things that we talk about that I talk about that are not wholly in my control and are possibly not even doable but I spend so much time just talking about things that are in my control and are doable as though they are not, that you wonder how confused it gets in your mind. Um, so I'm on like my second week of, I wake up earlier than usual so I can take this walk. I wake up and uh, I try to, within five minutes, I wake up, I put shoes on, I grab my coffee and uh, I head out the door and I usually just go around the block and it's just a nice way to start the day. But when I was a kid, I thought, I thought a constitutional was a poo. <laughs> because when you think about the way people talk about it and when you're a kid and you have not yet made the connection that walking is uh, recreational and, and it's exercise and it's good for the mind and all this stuff. You just hear people talk about, you know, I wake up and I take my morning constitutional. <laughs> and it's great, clears my mind. It's a great way to start the day. I feel lighter afterwards. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm just not the same guy if I don't get that morning constitutional in. You know, I was talking about taking it. I take that morning constitutional. <laughs> and in my mind, I had heard the word constipated and I was like, oh, so consta, means toilet <laughs> but it doesn't uh morning constitutional is just a walk that you take and i've been doing it and it's been nice and uh i especially needed it today because man oh man the 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 depression whoo got me yesterday it's got me a little bit today but seemingly out of nowhere like it does it just just put me down Sunday afternoon was having a great day. Everything was great. And then just all of a sudden, you know, um, in my mind, it's kind of like, first of all, I love when people say in my mind as though anything happens anywhere else. I had a very good conversation with a guy once and he was kind of blowing me away. And at the end of the conversation, he said, life happens between here and here. And I like that. But in my mind, it's like I'm in a room full of all the things I love and the people that I care about and, and the stuff that excites me and, and everything's great and it's bright and the windows are open and, and maybe there's a little music playing in the background and it's great. And I, I blink and then all of a sudden, it's a it's an empty room and the walls are gray and it's black and white and the floors are dusty and there's a little haze in the air 
and there's no door and there's no window and you're just in there. And it happened that fast on Sunday, just out of nowhere. Um, fortunately, it was a Sunday, so I was, my wife was home and I, I just told her. And I tried to explain it to her a little bit, but one of the great things about her is that she doesn't need it explained to her because she understands it as, as much as she can. And, and I don't necessarily think that we're so used to like doctors and things that like, I can help you because I completely understand what's going on. And I think a lot of times in life, you don't need to understand something to help someone, you know? Um, and she was great. We sat and talked for a little bit. And then when it became clear that, that it was one of these things where I would have been, I was prepared to just sit there and, and suffer until I was done suffering. And, uh, I was actually just laying on the bed, my arms out, just staring at the ceiling. And, um, and she went and, 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 uh, got me some water and then put in a movie that we both like. And we sat and watched this movie. And as I started to let myself, I started to laugh at the movie and, and started to feel really, um, really good about the fact that I had someone to talk to and, and someone that cared and someone that wanted me to feel better. And, and it didn't necessarily fix anything, but, but it helped. And in my mind, it helped just enough that I was able to grab onto this idea that this has happened before and it goes away. Sometimes it takes weeks to go away, um, but I know it goes away. I heard someone say once, I forget who it was, but somebody said, no feeling you've ever had has lasted forever. And, uh... I'm sure there's ways to pick that apart because some people, you know, the way I feel about my wife and son has lasted since I first felt it and uh, I anticipate it will last longer than even I do. But sometimes it's comforting to have these little quick things you can say to yourself. No feeling has ever lasted forever. Um, if you're here on this planet, it means you've survived literally everything that's ever happened to you. And sometimes that's enough. That and, and a, a partner who cares about you and, and a kid that you love and and a movie that makes you laugh and some rock and roll you know i listened to some a band called valiant thor last night and this morning and it's just riffy like southern kind of acdc style just rock and roll and that made me feel good and um you know it's tough <laughs> um i was i was born this way i have what they call um i have a lot of things that they call a lot of things but one of the things i have um, or one of the things I do, I guess, is called suicidal ideation. And um, it basically, there's, there's a, it's a spectrum. And at the one end of the spectrum is just you think about suicide and death. And at the other end of the spectrum, um, you, you plan it and you um, possibly even attempt and that kind of thing. And I have traveled that whole spectrum. But I, where I started and where I remain today is what they call passive suicidal ideation. Um, I just think about it all the time. Not all the time, but I, it, it, sometimes it's funny. Like sometimes my wife and I will joke about it because it's, it's such a part of the way my mind works and the way that I talk to her and, and things like that. Um, sometimes it's even how I get through things. <laughs> like if something's happening and I don't want to do it, um, I had like a, I had to replace a doorknob and like every project on the planet it's never just that you you get the doorknob and then you find out the doorknob doesn't fit or it's missing a screw so you got to go back to the place and you get the screw and then you come back home but you can't find your screwdriver and it was just right here who moved my screwdriver and it just goes on and on and on and some part of my brain is going oh when you're dead you won't have to fix doorknobs ever again there will be no traffic there will be no and sometimes it's comforting and other times it's not. And, and again, my way is through it and to just be honest and to find the humor in it when I can. And there is humor in it. There's humor in 
just about everything, I think. I've, I've yet to encounter the thing that didn't have some humor in it. Um, a lot of times it's just about timing. <laughs> um, but another thing that I've been thinking about, and this is where hopefully this thing will tick up and we'll have a better time. <laughs> uh, another thing I've been thinking about this past week is um, I've, been, I've been kind of looking into the, the philosophy a little bit deeper of Frederick Nietzsche. I know it's Nietzsche, uh, and it's probably Friedrich, Friedrich, Fr Nietzsche, you know. Um, <laughs> one of my younger brothers, I have two younger brothers and an older sister, and one of my youngest brother, he actually has like a degree. He studied um, philosophy in school, and uh, so he knows more about it than me. And we were joking that like, I know enough about a lot of philosophy to talk about it, but I'm never interested enough in like how you actually pronounce the thing or anything like that. <laughs> so there's this like, this like hillbilly philosopher tone of like, you know who I like is that, 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 uh, Freddie Nietzsche. He's, he's good people. You know, he's got that idea about, uh, you know, if, if a demon were to come in your loneliest of lonelinesses and, and tell you that you were damned to repeat your life forever, you know, how would you feel? He calls it, it's the love of your fate. You know, it's that amor fati. But <laughs> it's a good test. If you're talking about philosophy with someone, uh, purposely mispronounce a couple things because if they get all on your balls about it, uh, you don't want to talk to that person. <laughs> and they clearly don't understand if you're talking about these, these gigantic concepts about existence and life and the universe and your place in it and all this stuff. And he's going, uh, actually it's pronounced Nietzsche. He's just, see ya. <laughs> That's what it's pronounced. See ya. I'm out of here. <laughs> Anyways, Nietzsche, Nietzsche, uh, they often view him as, as kind of, me and my brother were talking about this, that they, they view him as, as more of a pessimist and, and, and a cynic and all this kind of stuff. And, and I told my brother that I, I saw it much differently. And I was, I was happy to find that he agreed because he would know. Um, you know, Nietzsche had this thing where he talked about if, if a demon came to you in the night when you were at your most lonely and and said, you are doomed to repeat your life as it has been and as it will be over and over and over and over and over again for eternity. How would you feel? And I'll, I guess it's uncommon to read it this way, but that's how I read it and how my brother read it, that that's aspirational. That's him saying, you should live a life so full of love and rock and roll and good movies that if a demon were to come and say, you have to do your life over and over and over and over again, you would do a fist pump. You'd be stoked on it because, because you would know like all the bad stuff I went through or will go through to have the life that I have is worth it because I love the life that I have so much. And, um, and I, I think that's really inspiring. And it's funny to be a little kid I think I was seven the first time that I, I sat down with a therapist to talk about why I was talking about ghosts so much and if, if ghosts are lonely and if, if, there, if there are ghosts that we don't even know about and, and maybe that's sad, you know? <laughs> and what would it be like to be a ghost and, and you know? And, and they were so concerned, they were trying to put me out like a fire. You know, they were like, don't, don't think like that. Don't talk like that. Life, it's great. Life's wonderful. It's great. It's beautiful. And now I'm, I'm coming up on 40 and I know that life is wonderful and beautiful and it's also painful and it ends in death. <laughs> Every single life that ever has been or ever will be ends in death. And I think when, when people are of, of a certain nature to think about that fairly often, it's worth maybe just trying to direct it. I've, I've since found a lot of philosophies and, and, and approaches to life um, that, that try to use that as a fuel, that, that awareness of death um, to, to teach you to hold on loosely. And, you know, if you can find another podcast that drops that 80s lyrical gem after talking about Friedrich Nietzsche, you should go listen to that podcast.
Um, it teaches you to hold on loosely and understand that you only have so much time. So maybe you shouldn't feel so down, but maybe you should work a little harder because you only have so much time, you know? Um, stoicism is real big on that, that memento mori stuff of in all things, remember that you will die. And, and I, th I think what a lot of people view as a, a sign or symptom of my personal brand of depression or the blues more often than not is motivational and more often than not is one of the reasons I put my phone down when my son wants to talk to me because someday I won't be able to talk to him and 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 I don't in my good moments I don't view that as as terrifying or sad I view that as the urgency you know I was talking to my dad and I was saying because when we get together because he, he lives far away and I live far away. And when we get together, we know it's only for this little amount of time. So let's go. Like, let's play some music and then let's go eat a meal. And then let's go see what's in this town and go see that stuff. And let's take a walk and let's laugh and let's have some coffee. And let's do everything we can do because we only have three or four days. And that's what's happening all the time with all of us everywhere in our lives. We only have this much time. And, you know... It's worth knowing. But again, if you can know it with a smile and a wink and a nod, um, so much the better for you. And that's that's what I'm aiming for. And right when I was about to shoot the podcast, um, I started humming this thing and kind of singing it out loud. And I, I realized that it was from a Josh Ritter song. And all, all of a sudden I was just kind of overwhelmed by like, this is why you should listen to good stuff. Because if you listen to good stuff, listen to disposable stuff too, for sure. Um, I love ACDC and, and, and like I said, like Motley Crue and that kind of stuff that is, is getting me stoked. But it's not really inspiring me in any kind of way to, to think differently or whatever. And I think there's a big, huge place for that kind of music. But there's also a place to listen to, to, to deep, powerful, thoughtful, considered stuff because if you listen to it it just it gets in there and it stays there and some part of my brain just recalled it out of nowhere while I was trying to get my I was setting up for the podcast and I was trying to get my head right and all of a sudden I without even thinking about it I'm singing out loud and this went on for a couple minutes and I realized oh that's a Josh Ritter song and it's called Lark and it's from this record called so runs the world away and in the song he just starts singing over and over again um i am assured that peace will come to me a peace that surpasses uh the speed of my understanding and my need and it's not a religious trip or anything like that it's just you know there's an avid brothers line where he just says there's hope for sure and if you let that stuff get in and just and just rest there, you'll be able to, without even really trying, bring it back right when you need it. And um, you know, I was I was glad to have that, and I'm glad to have it now. And I, I hope you guys get something out of it. Uh, so listen to Lark by Josh Ritter, and and know that it's gonna be okay. Sometimes that's a controversial thing to tell people it's going to be okay. People don't like, some people don't like that. But those people are all alive, so I'm right. <laughs> and you know what? If you tell someone it's going to be okay and you're there for them to comfort them in their moment, you can be wrong. You know, the thing people like about being told it's going to be okay is not knowing that they have been told the the absolute future and now they can be sure that everything's going to work out for them what they like is knowing that someone cares enough about them to say it's going to be okay and i hope it's going to be okay and even if this isn't okay you're going to be okay and it's going to be okay i am assured that peace will come to me so there's some josh ritter for you uh i had some other stuff we could have talked about but you know it always goes off the rails for me uh, especially when I try talking about ancient philosophy and stuff. Because <laughs> I mispronounce all the words. You know what it's like? It's like um, you go to a restaurant and 
and you get the burger because you're me and you're a low class moron. And uh, and the burger's great because you know they they mixed all like all kinds of herbs and seasoning into the patty before they even made it into a burger shape, and then they 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 grilled it just so and some butter and and then there's this. This, this like uh, this like horseradish aioli that they put on the top of it, you know, on, on this lightly grilled bun that they made themselves, and it's really, really great. And they, they serve it to you right away, and it's really fresh, and, and it's great. But my telling of that is always like, oh, you should get the burger, because it's, whew, you know, oof, it's something. <laughs> and that's kind of how I tell people about philosophy, too. Uh, <laughs> I have a very limited understanding of things and uh, an and even smaller capacity to communicate that understanding to people. So I just go, oof, that Nietzsche, that's something. You should, uh, mm, it's good. It comes with fries, get it. Uh, <laughs> I wrote a song about it um, that I is, is currently called Freddie Nietzsche's Intergalactic Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that makes me laugh, uh, writing a folk song about Nietzsche. And uh, that's fun. That's not what I'm going to play for you today. Today I'm going to play um, a song called Engine. And uh, this, it's about similar themes. It's about the realization that you are not your body and you are not your stuff. And you are not what people tell you that you are, and you are not what people tell you that you should be. And this is all a blink and a wink and is essentially already over. But it is real and you are here. And, and if you are so lucky as to uh, be loved and love in return, um, that's pretty good. So um, this is called Engine and uh, my throat's not feeling great today. It feels really dry and scratchy, and I tried to sing this song, and it didn't go great. But this is the song. Um, this is the song I'm supposed to play for you. So I'm going to play it for you, and it's going to go however it goes. And uh, it's not my throat anyways, so <laughs> here we go. That is not my heart on my sleeve Cause he's close to second hand That past thing got nothing to do with me Cause I ain't going back again and I'm not the ghost you know
right. <laughs> I'm not used to playing with a pick. Um, these days it's all been the fingers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that's one of the tricky things too about the way I've been playing music lately. It's, um, I'm used to, in an ideal setting, um, kind of being on a stage with a microphone. And, and throughout the show you might have to cough or clear your throat. And you can just take a step back and do that and no one will hear. And you can even do it mid-song, and often you do. Um, but I cannot do that. Not the way I'm doing this now. Sometimes I worry it's not going to come back the way it was. Because um, it hasn't yet. And it's been well over a year. Uh, it's probably coming up on two years. A year and a half, something like that. Um, and other times I think, like, okay, well... If it goes, it goes, um, and we'll figure something else out. <laughs> um, those moments are rare. <laughs> Usually, I, I'm, I try to stay hopeful that like, eh, it's been, it's been steadily getting better, and it's gonna keep getting better. Not at the pace you might like, but it'll keep getting better. Um, other times, I just, you know, I think when you're dead, you won't have to worry about your throat. <laughs> Let's do some recommendations. Obviously, of course, we've talked about Josh Ritter before, uh, but guess whose podcast this is? We're talking about it again. Um, check out So Runs the World Away by Josh Ritter and listen to Lark and uh, be assured that peace will come to you. This record is by a gentleman named Nick 13, and the record is self-titled. Thus, it is called Nick 13. Uh, Nick 13 is the singer, guitar player, songwriter for a rockabilly punk band called Tiger Army out of California. And they're great, and I love them. And he has some really phenomenal guitar tone. Uh, and this is solo record. It's more of a traditional country thing, and I love it. I wish there had been more of these. I hope he'll make another one someday. But currently, this is the only one. It came out in 2011, and it's great. I really like it. It's kind of the traditional country stuff. Um, but it sounds very modern, and, and, and he'll mix in some bluegrass and stuff like that in there. And I really think you'll enjoy it. Um, listen to the song Someday by Nick13, which is more of the, one of the more bluegrassy ones, but um, I think you'll dig it. And then listen to this record. This band is called Mandolin Orange. The record is called Austin City Limits, live at the Moody Theater, January 23rd, 2020. And I know we've talked about Mandolin Orange before, but guess whose podcast it is? <laughs> We're going to talk about them again. Um, this is a live record that obviously they recorded on January 23rd, 2020. And um, they announced its release sort of mid-late last year. And uh, I ordered the limited edition double LP colored vinyl. And because of, of 2020 doing what it did, it kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And, and finally it arrived a couple weeks ago. And it's wonderful. Um, they're, they're a great band. Um, this live record sounds better than most people's studio records. And they even say themselves in the liner notes, um, we hope this show brings you a little live music relief during the world's hiatus from touring. We can't wait to play for you soon. Um, and it, uh, it accomplishes that. It, it, it feels like, nothing feels like being at a show, but this is, um, this is a nice reminder of, of what it is, you know, what it feels like to be in a room with people playing songs and, and telling stories and, and having fun. So that's that. Maybe next week we'll get to all the other stuff. It's going to talk about um, conspiracy theory. If you guys want to be uh, in the know, Google uh, floating ship. And there's this amazing thing that this guy saw a ship out in the water and it's floating very high in the air. And there's a picture of it and everything. And apparently it's a scientific phenomena uh, about temperature and the way light reflects or refracts or refarks or whatever light does. Um, if you thought I sounded like an idiot talking about philosophical, spiritual, you know, mental, personality, emotional stuff, we'll talk science sometimes and you'll feel like a genius afterwards. <laughs> um, thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. Um, 
I write songs. You can listen to those anywhere you want. Go to ChristopherGold.com. And uh, thanks for supporting the podcast. All that information comes up at the end here, and it's right down there uh, if you want to support the podcast. And um, in the meanwhile, you know, keep your chin up. It's going to be okay. Uh, I'm assured that peace will come to all of us. And um, we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.